Well, folks, here we are again, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word. God honors praise. The God that created the heavens and the earth honors praise. In the praises, and around his throne are the praises of many beings, some human beings and some angelic beings. There are things called seraphims. There are things called cherubims. There are angels. There are people that worship God. Theoretically, every praise I make on this earth is a praise in front of the throne of God. Those that went on before you and I and from paradise, the Old Testament saints, are a great cloud of witnesses at the throne of God. And when we get to heaven, the Bible said the table will already be set. There will be 24 elders sitting around that table. These are overseers today looking down over this earth. You say, how do you know that, Brother Peter? The Bible said there is great rejoicing in the presence of the angels. That's where God is. And the presence of angels around his throne over every soul that is saved. That's why it's so important for you and I to be soul winners, to get out here and win some souls, to get a man, to uh, pick up a man hitchhiking and say, listen, fella, has anybody ever talked to you about Jesus? And most of the time they'll say, I've heard of him. And I'll say, well, have you ever thought about asking him into your heart to be your personal savior? And many times they'll say, well, I thought about it, but I never had done it. Well, you know, I ask God during the day, every day, to put before me that one is the closest to going to hell that needs to go to heaven, that he has spoke to, he's already worked with, and I speak to them, and they'll say, yeah, I want to be saved, and they'll ask the Lord to save them. Now, a lot of people say, well, what, what about this? At the end of it, I don't know. I may never see that man again. There's a thing called the Holy Spirit, which belongs to God, which said he's the one that will chide to that soul, that will bring that soul. I usually give them a track. That one track that I give them has enough information if they get into a Bible, which I tell them to do. If I've got a Bible with me, I'll give out Bibles too. And uh, uh, that has enough information, that track has, if they get into the Bible with it, they get started on the right road, and God deals with those people. And they uh, later on in life, I'll hear from some and say, you remember me, you, you, you won me to the Lord. And I'll say, wow, good, God brought you in through the, using me, but I didn't do anything but be the messenger. I was the messenger, and the Holy Spirit did the work. Look at 1, 148. God dwells in praises. And he said, Praise ye the Lord. There again, and I'm talking out of a King James Version, you praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. And the heavens do praise the Lord. Praise him in the heights, in the high places. But praise him anywhere in the world. You know, some, I was talking a while ago on one of these excerpts. I get up early in the morning. It's freezing cold in the house. It's cold wintertime. Freezing cold and I burn wood. So what do you have to do to get heat in the house? You have to build a fire. Yeah, and it takes a while after you build a fire to get the wood, to get the heat out of the wood. To get it up to where you're setting so that you can be warm enough to be able to function uh, comfortably. And that's just the way it is in this world. You're either too hot or too cold most of the time. But it says, praise the Lord, all ye lands. Praise him, all ye people. Praise him, all everything. Praise God with every fiber. With every fiber. Praise the Lord. The, there's a lot of statements in the Bible about a man being planted like a tree by the rivers of water. There's a lot to say about trees. If you'll study trees in the Bible and study what God says about them, that they raise their boughs up to God and that they have the strength, the strength of, of, of more than steel, more than steel. I can tell you one way that you can prove that yourself is figure out 
the uh, system that the power company uses for pole, telephone poles. They still use wood. They can use steel. They can use cement, which they use both still. But they have found out that long term, there is nothing that holds up better than wood. Wood is up trees that God grew. Trees that God grew that are interwove, intertwined, and interwove. The strongest thing. I, 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 I've got an old tree right out front right here. I wish I could show you a picture of it with a limb sticking out 45 feet this big around at the base and out there. And I've cut some of that up. I cut one old one down that had died for firewood. And, and the, just the pieces off the limb, or a man can't hardly roll one around that's so heavy, uh, just 14, 15 inches long. And that's of a limb that was sticking out of the tree, that was hanging out there straight out. And that limb weighed thousands of pounds out there, yet it didn't break off. It held up. God is an awesome God, and he put these things together, and he finally knit them. Now listen, praise him. Praise him, all the angels. Praise him, all the host of heaven and all the host of the world. All the hosts. Praise ye him, the sun and the moon. Praise him, all the stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters, and above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created. He hath also Establish them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. He made a decree which shall not pass. This earth and this heaven, he is going to one day put them away and create a new heaven and a new earth like this one that will sustain itself forever. At that point in time, though, you and I, who are Christians, will be with him in the heavens. And we'll be as the angels are in the heavens with God, and we'll be working in eternity over another earth, over another place. And we will be rulers somehow in that earth. And God's going to make another, whatever, I don't know, he may make other generations of people. He may make other generations of many things. But whatever it is that he makes in the heavens and in the new earth, you and I are going to be there. We're going to be part of it. And for what we do now on this earth is what our position is going to be in that day. The rewards that we have in heaven will go before us and they'll be there when we get there. It's not something we'll necessarily take with us one of the things we will take with us will be the gold and silver that are the precious things of God and all other things will be dross and be burned off, wood, hay, and stubble. And the only thing that will last is what's been sent ahead. You know there was a lady in the Bible that had two mites. That's all she had. She put the two mites in the offering plate and for several thousand years now those two mites have been drawing interest. <laughs> Can you imagine for thousands of years how much two mites might be? How many times it has tripled, quadrupled, doubled, and quadrupled? And that little lady has that in heaven forever and for eternity. And it will never quit multiplying. It will multiply through eternity. <laughs> She's probably going to own a few streets of gold, don't you reckon? And uh, not that it matters so much. What matters is to be in the presence of God and praising God for what he is, what he has done, and what he is, and what he is going to do. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all ye deep. He's saying that every living thing, every living thing, needs to praise God. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Wow. He is in charge. I have done, uh, not in real in-depth study, but some study about the snow and the hail. And I know it's reserved in heaven. 
by God for a reason. But God made snow for, for lots of reasons. Snow is one thing that cleanses the air, cleans the atmosphere. Snow cleans the atmosphere, cleans the air, and brings down all the impurities so you and I can live longer and better. And hail, hail is reserved for judgment. Uh, and when it hails, if it hails just small flakes, pay attention. God's saying, I can hail these 135 pound flakes and, and destroy everything on the earth all at one time if I care to. And he could, and he could mingle fire with hail. You say, how so? The hailstones are so high, traveling at such speed, they generate heat, and they generate flames around them. Yet they can be big enough up there when they leave, and they weigh five, six, seven hundred pounds. When they get down here, they weigh 100, 135 pounds. But a 135 block, five pound block of hail would destroy a house with one hit. So God has a way. Study those things and see what God has. Listen, mountains, all you hills, your fruit trees, and all you cedars. <laughs> you and I think because we're human, we're the only thing around that matters so that can praise God. No, God said all the hills can praise him, all the fruit trees can praise him, all the cedar trees can praise him, and by the way, it talks about the straight, tall cedars of Lebanon standing up there with God's trees, and they praise the Lord. And listen, you can do a study on that and find out. All the beasts and all the cattle and all the creeping things and all the flying fowls. <laughs> hey, God is feeding all of those things. God is feeding everything on this earth. He is keeping it together. He's keeping it alive. And he's saying, for it to praise. And the kings of the earth, and all the people, and the princes, and all the judges of the earth. Wow. This is where in the United States of America we have really slipped. In verse 11, the presidents do not praise God. The uh, people in the princes and the places of high courts and judgment and judges and, and those people do not praise God. And because they have gone away from God, the whole country groans and moans. The whole nation of the um, United States of America is moaning and groaning and having a terrible time because our leaders have left God out of the equation. Our schools have taken God out of the equation. Now we have mass murders and things. You didn't have that stuff when God was there. But you take him out, and that's what you're left with. Verse 12, both young men and maidens, old men and children, praise God. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praises of all his saints, even of the children of Israel a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. I can't sing a lick <laughs> with my mouth, but I can sing with my heart. And praise ye the Lord. Now we saw many things that praise the Lord. The earth, the dragons, the depth, the oceans, the lightning, the fire, the hail, the snow, the vapor, the wind, the, the typhoons, the mountains, the hills, the fruit, fruit, fruit trees, all the cedars, the beasts, all the cattle, the creeping thing, all the flying fowl, kings of the earth, people of the earth, princes of the earth, all the judges, all the young men, all the young women, and all of the old men, all the children, let them all praise his name. Now, every single solitary thing on the earth is commanded to praise God. For his name is excellent. For his name is excellent. For his glory is above all of the earth. And the glory, his glory is above all the heavens. And his glory is above all 
of everything that's ever existed, the glory of God. Is it my time's come and gone? As Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.